the object repository is powerful and easy to use. First, we'll find an application that we'll use here. I'll use the calculator and we'll click open. The calculator is great because it mimics all the advanced apps and we all have it in our computer. So here we have our sequence. Let me go here and go down to object repository. It should look like this. If you look like this, simply just click the object repository. Again, if you don't see it, you need to have the modern design experience installed and click this little wheel here. The modern design experience needs to be enabled here. Yes. You can also enable this modern design experience on project level. Just click home settings design and use modern for new project. Yes. Let us move back to studio and the object repository. So here you'll click record and now we will specify what application we're using. So I click this one here and I have the application. Here you can see our screen name. Remember to rename this if it's not suitable. Calculator is fine for us. You can see the application path is here and a window selector. Now we can start to add the descriptors. I want the equal sign. So I just click here. And here you can see that we have a, st a strict selector, a fuzzy selector, and an image. That looks something that we know. Up here in the element name, let us make sure that we are describing what this is about. The type is button. Here you can also change the type if it's not looking what you want. But for now, it is fine. Here you can either confirm by clicking enter or click this little V. I also want the minus button here. So I click this one. So here the element name is minus and similarly we have a strict selector and a fuzzy selector. Finally, I want a, a dynamic element. So I again I save this and then I want a dynamic element to can be switched between these numbers. Here let me pick the four. It looks like this. So what I will do here is that I'll rename this. So I'll say uh, dynamic number. I will be disabling the fuzzy and this one up here. And here I'll be creating my dynamic selector. The first thing I'll do is to just do a little bit of I'll delete this. And here this is my dynamic element. This is this number four. And say that I change it to six. Then I can test if this works. I can just click this little here. You can see that it's now over here. Similarly, if I go to number nine, I can uh, I have now created a dynamic selector. I just need a variable instead of this number. So I delete this. I then uh, right click here and I use a variable. So this variable needs to be created. And this one here, I'll just call this, uh, maybe number would be suitable. We will have no default valid for now. I'll click confirm. So now we have a variable inside our selector. Go click save. This is fine. It says that this number doesn't have a default value. That is fine for now. You can see it turns red. That's because this number doesn't hold a thing. So I'll just click save. Over here in the calculator app, you can now find uh, the calculator we just created and these three things. We can also edit the ones. So what I will do here is that I can right click, I can edit element and here I can give it a different name. I can even edit the descriptor, say that I want the plus instead. I can just delete this. I can pick the plus here and I can click confirm. So now er, I'll also need to rename my element name and I'll click save. One other powerful thing is that we can capture all the elements in an application. It is less time consuming if we want to capture all elements of an application, but it requires a computer vision server for use. You'll have it in the community version of your UI path. So open up the recorder again, choose capture all elements, pick the application where you want to. Uh, now you can see that these are the ones that it will find. So I'll click capturing it will find 48, which will be all of the UI elements in this one here, except the disabled one. Now you can see it just literally cycles through. And right now we will, of course, not use all these. But for now, it's fine to see that you can automatically do this instead of sitting yourself and uh, 
uh, doing it. So here we have it and it says one invalid element. We will just need to, if we wanted to use this actually into something, then we needed to um, pay close attention here. Here, the calculator app one, we, what we want here is to uh, right click edit application and probably ca uh, calculate app all buttons or something like this. So now it's a bit more describing. We will not use this capturing all elements. Since now we want to use it across project. What you will do here is that you will uh, find uh, this one here. That's the calculator app. That's the one we're going to use. So click here, extract as UI library project, go click create, and we'll choose to open it. Here you will, or in a little while at least, as you can see, this is the only application in the object repository now. Again, we can edit, add, or modify. So uh, since we're happy with this, we will now publish it, publish it as a NuGet, and then I'll click publish. This one seems fine, I'll click next. I'll not be publishing into the orchestrator, I'll just pick custom. And here I will choose a local folder. So I can create a new folder here, I can press right click new and then create it here, you can create it wherever you want. Here I want to say NuGet packages, I just created inside my UI path um, directory. So I will use this folder here, so I'll just be saying select folder. Then I can just click publish. This will publish it. I'll click accept. Now uh, we can use this NuGet package. Um, I can specify it further, but I'll go to home. This was, sorry, I'll go to start. I'll open up a new process. So this one I'll call use object repository and I'll click create. Open up the work workflow. Now we want to use the application that we just automated. So I go up to manage packages, click settings, and down here we will add it. So this one could be called calculator uh, package. And here I'll need to specify where I have it. So click these three dots, and I'll just be selecting this folder. That is where my package is. But of course, you can uh, add specific folder to each of the application, then I can click add. Now you can see that we have it here. And everything is fine. We also need to install it. And to install it, you can find it down here, click it, say install, click save. And there you go, we now have it over here. To use it, you will go to activities, then you'll find a use application slash browser and drag it in. Now, let me just, uh, now I want to use the calculator. What I can do is simply just drag it in here. There you go, we now use the calculator. This also means that when I edit or modify it, I can, I will just take it from here, this locally backed up place. So now let's also, now we have opened this calculator. Let's also do a click. So here I will be saying, click. This one will go into the calculator. Again, I can simply just say, what do I want to click? Well, let's pick the dynamic number. So I put it in here. Here it says that STR uh, number are used by the project, but are not defined in the QN workflow. Do you want to create them? I can choose to do so. And if I go down here, you can see that I now have an STR number. And this one is a string. That's fine. We'll use it. So if I, for example, give it a the value of six, let me remember the quotation marks, I can just uh, start my automation with these reused element. This means that when I run it, it should click the number six button. There you go. And if I change this one here, and also use an assign, of course, so let's just change it to zero and run the automation again. This is how you're using the object repository. Of course, I haven't reset it. So I'll just uh, keep typing it in. And similarly, we could have the plus and the equal, but I'll let that one be up to you. So here you can see this little sign here. That means that it is from the object repository. It's here and here. And we now reuse the ex existing descriptors. We cannot move this informative screenshot, unfortunately. 
And if you want to learn even more UiPath, you should click this video here in the middle.